Hi, this is Teddy Burris, your LinkedIn trainer and coach. I'm all about helping people master this business tool we call LinkedIn. One of my clients called me this morning and she asked me a question. She said, Teddy, I want to adjust my LinkedIn's privacy and settings. I'm not sure what to do. So will you walk me through it? Rather than answer the questions just for her, I thought I would create this video. So your privacy and settings right here, if you go up here to your uh, profile picture up on the right here, go down to privacy and settings and click on manage or anywhere on that line actually. You will need to know your LinkedIn password. So this is the LinkedIn privacy and settings, make it a little bit bigger. So I'm not gonna talk about password and payment and email and all that, I'm gonna go right straight down to here. Profile, turn on and off your news mention. This is where you get, you can alert your network to news about you, whether it's news through LinkedIn or news through Newsly. If LinkedIn finds that news, it can mention it in the news feed. I again want people to know what I'm doing. I leave that yes. Second one is choose whether or not to share your profile edits. Every time you update your profile with a new job, a new skill, a new volunteer, a new publication, uh, pretty much add any high level content to your LinkedIn profile. Not editing, but just high level changes, specifically when you change your header, specifically when you change your, uh, your current position or uh, uh, description, that will create a news feed alert um, or uh, notification. I'm a big fan of leaving that on, but manage it. I, if I'm really just cleaning up my profile, I turn that off, but leave it on most of the time. See who can see your activity feed. This is my activity. This is my posting, my sharing, my commenting, etc. That gets posted. I want. Uh, I can have either hide it from everybody, let only my first level see it, let my first, second, and group connections see it, or everyone. I want my stuff 100% public. I leave it for everyone. Select what others see when you view their profile. When I view your profile, I want you to know I did that. The reason I want you to know that I did that is it creates an opportunity for engagement. I'm not hiding anything I'm doing on LinkedIn. I'm 100% public. I actually get good LinkedIn connection requests and good conversations because I view people's profiles. So I leave that on recommended, I, uh, I, uh, your name and headline, I don't hide behind anything or go completely private. Turn on and off how you rank, shows how you compare to your connections and your colleagues uh, in the uh, ranking part of who's viewed your profile. I'm okay with that. I want people to see that I am of good standing, that I'm uh, very deliberate in my use of LinkedIn, and that I rank pretty high as a LinkedIn trainer and coach. So I leave that on. Select who can see your connections. Because I want to help people, I allow my connections to see who I'm connected to. That's important to me. Again, it's an opportunity to help or give on social media. I'm not worried about someone stealing my clients because they see who I'm connected with. That is not happening. My clients will get, will get stolen from me if I don't serve them properly, not because someone knows they're my client. Choose who can follow your updates. Because I'm an active poster on LinkedIn, I post in a LinkedIn long form posts and content on a regular basis. Again, I do that to be discovered. I want my network to see it. I also want the opportunity for people who I am not connected with to see that. So instead of just my connections, I leave it everyone. I get followers to my LinkedIn post, and to me, that's important. Profile photo and uh, Profile photo and visibility, this lets me change. It's gonna kick me into editing my profile. Change my photo, it's gonna let me adjust it if I want to crop it differently. It's also gonna allow me to decide who can see my photo, my connections, my network for a second and group, or everyone. I want everyone to see my profile picture. It creates an opportunity to perceive me as approachable. Show hide viewers this profile also viewed. So. The, the, often what happens uh, in this box over here on the right hand side, LinkedIn will say people who have also looked at Tay's profile looked at these profiles. And then generally they're going to be my, my network, my top level network, or in some cases they're going to be my peers or what some people call their competitors. I'm okay with that. I'm a big fan of, uh, of showing relevance, so I leave that on. 
manage who you're blocking. That's a list of people I'm blocking. I don't want to bring that up. It would be impolite, but it allows me to unblock people uh, uh, from that list. Manage how people who have your phone number can connect with you. People that have my phone number in their contacts and they upload their contacts to LinkedIn can create a connection to me, at least through you know the phone number, not a first level connection. I'm okay with that being discovered based on my phone number. They have my phone number. It's nothing, they're not somebody I don't know. So I'm okay with everybody being able to discover me because of that phone number. The last one is turn on and off, meet the team. If your company's using LinkedIn job posts, then your, your profile could show up relevant to a job that matches your background and or your function. You can hide it if you want. I don't need to worry about that. Manage your Twitter. If you have a Twitter account, you can attach it there. You, you can add another. To, I can have it. I know I can have two. I'm trying to add more than two. I can also display my Twitter account on my LinkedIn profile if I want, which I do. I don't just have a Twitter account. I use Twitter. Manage your WeChat. I'm not using that. These are just links to some other areas within your profile. Step two, communications. This is a become such a big list. LinkedIn had to break it up into five different sections. You'll see that most of mine I've turned off. Some of them I have an individual email as I'm doing some testing, a weekly digest because I'm doing testing. But for the most part, I turn most of this off because I am pretty much in LinkedIn every day on a regular basis. I don't need these emails coming to me about stuff that I'm already looking at. However, sometimes I turn it on so I can experiment with it or experience it and then I go decide if I want to turn it off again. And then if you'll see that, you know, there's, again, there's five different sections. Here's my group digest, all the groups I'm in. I think today you can be upwards to 100 groups. But you'll see most of my group digests I've turned off. That's because I'm in those groups enough to where I'm getting information directly from the group or they're not a highly important group to me. So also that's another reason why I turn them off. But the ones who are highly important to me or the ones that are very interesting to me and useful, then I leave those on because I get an email that spurs me to go into that group and see what's going on. Notifications, this is activity. So you'll notice, you know, I can get you know, likes, comments, or other responses to my activity. You'll see for the most part, I turned this off. I left professional and identity digest turned on. I haven't discovered what it is yet. So one day I may. And then messages from LinkedIn. You'll see that, you know, new products, tips, and special offers. offers. I'm good with that. Referrals for jobs, emails for jobs. I don't need that. That was all under communications, frequency of emails. Push notifications. I don't know what that is yet. I've asked LinkedIn. I haven't got a haven't got a good response to tell me what it is yet. I have not experienced messages from others being you know pushed notifications. I haven't experienced it. Don't know what it is yet. So I leave it on until I figure it out. I haven't been bothered by it. Select the type of messages you're willing to receive. This message is introductions from people who want to introduce me to someone else. Inmails or LinkedIn's inmail. I call it the cold call, cold call messaging. Another version of the cold call messaging and open profile messages. Because I am a premium subscriber, my, uh, others can send me an inmail without paying for it because, um, because I am a premium subscriber. Could turn that off to introductions and email only, no open profile or introductions only, which pretty much would kill it all. I'm okay with these messages. I am not being bothered by them. These are the types of opportunities. I really expect this to go away one day. Nobody really pays attention to it. Pretty much says I'm open to an in mail regarding career opportunities, expertise, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The, what's the most important box in this section here is what's called the advice for contacting you box. This is a highly searched fee, uh, box on LinkedIn and also in mobile, this shows up as a hyperlink on the web browsers, it doesn't. But this is pretty much where I tell people who I am and what I do, how I help my clients. If you're looking for this kind of help, then let's connect. And I even publish my office number there. But again, I am not getting burdened by this in any way. It's a great way to tell people who I am and why I like to connect. The last one is who can send me invitations? Pretty much anyone. They don't need to have just have my email address or be in my imported contacts. That's pretty much limiting the connections you're gonna get. And for some exec, high level executives, I generally say turn that on. 
Uh, but then the other one is only people who appear in your in your imported contacts. Again, this is very limiting. This is pretty much making yourself wide open to all LinkedIn uh, members. Again, I am not burdened by it. Third section in the uh, privacy and settings box is groups, companies, and applications. So you can select your group order. I'm not going to go into that. It pretty much only adjusts the group orders for your own view, not for the general public. View groups going to click you. Uh, it's going to kick you over into the groups window, the new groups window on LinkedIn. Set the frequency of group digest. Again, this is going to go back through the same thing we looked at earlier for under communications. Turn on and off group invitations. If you don't want to get invited to a group by a member of that group, you can turn that off. I prefer to leave it on. Turn on and off notifications for when joining groups. So yes, publish an update to my network when I join a group. I want people to know what groups I'm in. So I want them to see me join these groups. Because pretty much most of the, all of the groups I join are groups that are relevant to me. View companies you follow. Let's so go to my company list. View your applications. That's important to look at. Let me re let me repeat. Viewing your applications is important to look at periodically. These are the applications that you have connected to LinkedIn. Babbly, Thumbtack. You want to look at this periodically and see which of these you have connected to your LinkedIn that you no longer want connected. This is important to pay attention to. I look at this uh, probably once or twice a year. Mentors Guild, that's okay. Buffer. And then I make a decision which ones I want to check and remove. And I remove those so they're no longer connected to LinkedIn. Pay attention to your applications that are connected to LinkedIn. Turn off data sharing with third parties. I think I've turned that off. I don't need to share my contact information, my profile with third party applications. That, in my opinion, creates an opportunity for, to be bothered or spammed by people who want to market to LinkedIn um, uh, members. The last section here is under account. So under account, manage your advertising preferences. I turn that off. I don't need to have LinkedIn advertisement coming to me, especially from third parties. The other part under is change your photo visibility. We've already looked at that. Show hide uh, profile photos of other members. That's for everyone. I want to see people on LinkedIn. I don't want to just see my network, which is my first, second group, or my just my first level or no one. I want to see profile pictures. Maybe that is turned on so that when recruiters are looking at uh, individuals on LinkedIn, they will not become biased by a photo picture. I actually like that. I think it's interesting. I might do some re more research on that. But for me, I want to see all profiles. Under account, uh, manage homepage content you're hiding. I don't need to show that to you, but you have the ability to adjust what you're hiding. And pretty much from this window, you would unhide. Manage video settings. This is uh, autoplay and videos in my news feed. I have not seen that happen yet. I pretty much have to click on um, the play button to make a YouTube video or another video play. So I'm going to leave that on until I see it do something different. Select your language, straightforward, manage your security settings. This is where you go in and you do your two-level or two-step verification. So if I log into LinkedIn on another device that I have not logged in on at all or lately, then LinkedIn is going to send me a text message with an authorization code that I have to use to be able to get into LinkedIn. I like two-step verification. I use it. Suggest you do as well. Add change email addresses goes back up here. Manage phone numbers goes back to your LinkedIn profile. All to change, change your password goes back up top. There it is, change your password. Uh, upgrade your account, don't need to teach you that. Download or change your premium, don't need to teach you that. Request and archive your data. That's interesting, you can get uh, your LinkedIn content uh, sent to you as an archive. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting, it's not as complete as you would think it is and I don't have a need for close your account. I really encourage you to go through your LinkedIn privacy and settings at least once every few months to A, look and see what's there that wasn't there before, new stuff, and B, make sure you have the right settings for the way you use LinkedIn. I'm Teddy Burris, your LinkedIn coach and trainer. I'm all about helping individuals master this business tool. I hope that was helpful.